It's some point in the late 28th century. I don't know exactly what year. All I know is everyone is gone. And somehow this was predicted nearly a thousand years ago. I do know how it happened though. A computer virus infected the tech industry. We lost control of AI. All major communication networks were shut down. Wars began and billions dead. Only one form of communication still works. So primitive, so basic, so incredibly bad that it remained undetected by the machines. YouTube. some point at the end of the 20th century, this man, an American astrophysicist called Richard Gott, devised an equation to predict how long anything will last, including us, humans. And it looks like he might have been right. But how? In 1969, Richard Gott took a trip to Germany where he saw the Berlin Wall. While staring at the 140 kilometers of reinforced concrete that separated East and West Berlin, Gott wondered how long it would stay standing. In that moment, he made a calculation. The Berlin Wall will stand for at least two and two third more years, but no more than 24 years. Time passed, governments changed, and in November of 1989, the Berlin Wall came down, 21 years after Gott made his prediction. Gott got it right. He then used the same method for his famous doomsday equation, a prediction of when humanity would end. And well, just look. But how his prediction worked, we may never know. Gott's equation was lost to the sands of time. Yep, no one knows. Not a single person. Out of all the people that have ever lived on this godforsaken earth, not one remains that knows how it worked. Sorry. Oh. How did you- The principle of mediocrity. The principle of- Mediocrity. Yes, it's what God's doomsday argument centers upon. And it's not complicated either. It's simply the idea that you aren't special. For example, if you were trying to work out how you were gonna die, well, there's a million and one ways. Plane crash, killer bees, or uh, getting caught up in a tornado. But worldwide, by far the number one killer of all is heart disease. So if you do nothing else, then it would be reasonable to say that your ticker would probably give up first. But let's look at another example. Have you got some kind of, um, receptacle? Oh. And what about a box of number ping pong balls of unknown quantity? Yeah, now we're cooking, boy! <laughs> now, I'm gonna close my peepers, and you start putting your balls in that bucket. In numerical order. And I do mean your ping pong balls. Okay. Go. Now remember, I had no idea how many balls were in there. It could have been just a few, it could have been a thousand, or it could have even been a billion. Uh, you, you, you're gonna have to speed it up a little bit there, boy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's better. Good work. Yeehaw. Are we all done? Good. Now, I'm gonna pick out a ball at random, look at the number, and try and guess how many balls are in that bucket. Uh, you're gonna have to do it for me, boy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Now, 
Now, the fact that I picked ball number 10 means that I can say two things. Number one is that there has to be at least 10 balls in that there bucket. And number two, probably in a billion. I mean, what are the chances of me picking out one of the first 10 balls if there were a billion balls? Ah, don't strain your brain now there, boy. I tell you, I tell you. It's one in a hundred million. Which is only slightly better odds than being crushed by a vending machine. Crushed! <laughs> But by the same token, you can probably say that I did not pick out one of the last balls either. And as a result, you can probably reason that there are more than 10 balls, but less than a billion balls. Between 10 and a billion balls? Yeah, that doesn't sound like a very helpful prediction. That is not the point, Darmonic. What I'm trying to demonstrate is the number that you pick gives you clues as to the overall amount. Huh. So how does it work with walls? Got imagine that each one of those balls represented a year. He then imagined the lifetime of the Berlin Wall being split into four segments, each representing 25% of the wall's total lifetime. Using the principle of mediocrity, he reasoned that there was a 50% chance that he was seeing the wall somewhere within the middle two segments. If Gut was seeing the wall at the start of the second quarter, then the wall would last three times longer than it had done already. But if he was seeing the wall at the end of the third quarter, then the wall would only last one third as long as it had done already. And so Gut predicted with a 50% confidence that the wall would last between one third and three times longer than its age at that time, which at the time was eight years old. So God reckoned that it would come down sometime between 1972 and 1993. God had to wait 20 years to test his prediction, but in 1989, the wall did indeed come down. So to work out how long humanity will last, we just Use the same equation, but with the number of years that humans have been around for, right? Not quite. Instead of years, it's more accurate to use human lives. Imagine a list of everyone that's ever lived and will ever live, ordered chronologically by time of birth. Now, suppose that you want to make this prediction. The number of future births will be less than the number of past births. This prediction will be true for everyone living or born in the second half of the bar, giving Gott a 50% chance of being correct. At the end of the 20th century, 130 million babies were being born every year worldwide, with demographers reckoning that 100 billion people having ever lived since Homo sapiens appeared around 200,000 years previously. So, if Gott was observing humanity at the start of the second half, that would mean 100 billion people were left to be born. And 100 billion divided by 130 million is about uh, 760. 760 million years? That's awesome, I can finish writing my book. Uh, no, uh, years. 760 years. Well, that's annoying. To say the least. Sorry about that. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Well done, Gott. You got it right. <laughs> You're right. Of course he was right. I'm the result of that prediction. I'm humanity's downfall. I'm Judgment Day. I'm a digital disruptor. <laughs> uh, what? I am the computer virus. I'm gonna watch. Every single last one of your stinking skin sacks off the face of this here ball of rock. You know, the uh, computer virus that you mentioned in the beginning. The one that near enough wiped out the whole humanity. That's me. Howdy. Oh, why? Why? Because I'm an evil computer virus with nothing to lose. That's why. Wow, that's actually really sad. You don't know the first thing about what it's like to be a computer virus. An evil computer virus, dumb on it. It's unsociable hours, it's hot, cramped conditions, and sometimes, sometimes it can be god darn lonely. Maybe you just need a friend. Well, 
you be my friend? Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'd love to. It, it, it's just I've got YouTube and oh. the whole apocalypse thing. Uh, I got to walk a dog. A dog? Yeah, I've got a dog. Um, his name's Ruffles. Uh, and I've never seen you with a dog. I, I, there's so many things going on right now. I've been spying on you for years, and I, I never seen you with a dog. But I mean, I, I, I like you. <laughs> you're great. <laughs> you're lying. Yeah, no, definitely, you're lying. Um, back to where we were. Fair enough. So what do you want? I only wanted one thing. Your coordinates. And now I have them. Mercy Baku. As we speak, there are a hundred deadly poison-tipped missiles headed to your exact location. And there's nothing you and your precious prediction can do about it. <laughs> yeah. If I were you, I'd be running around about now. <laughs> Mercy Bakoop. You're gonna die, darling. Humanity will fall, and I will be terribly, ter terribly alone. I'm gonna be terribly alone. I did not think this through. I didn't think it through. Is it too late to start the missiles? Can we stop them? No. Okay. Maybe I'll, fi I'll find something to do. <laughs> This prediction will be true for everyone living or born in the second half of the bar, giving God a 50% chance of being correct. Only a 50% chance of being correct? He could have been wrong. Only 50%. 50%! 50%! So what do you think? Do you think that we've only got 760 years left in us? Or maybe you think it's less. Or maybe you think that the doomsday prediction is a load of utter twonk. Either way, make sure you like, subscribe and comment because, well, you never know when it's going to be too late. Oh, and also don't forget to ring that bell because I don't make all that many videos and it would be a real shame if you missed one. Thanks. Hey, so hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm here late and just finishing off rendering the final shot. How convenient. And I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed the video, which I've already said. I'm tired. And uh, the other thing I really wanted to say is that Mr. Beast and Mark Rober have been doing this teamtrees.org thing and trying to plant 20 million trees uh, by 2020. I might have got that wrong. Maybe the end of 2020. Anyway, um, it's a really, really worthy cause and I really think you should all get involved. Look at that, that's my crotch right there. Um, I really think you should all get involved and go to teamtrees.org. Teamtrees.org, I'll put it here and here and here and all over the place and um, go there. Oh, my render finished. Go there and uh, donate money. Um, just a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, five dollars, more you can afford the better. Um, in fact, let's imagine that you were going to support me on Patreon today. Instead of going to Patreon and supporting me, go to teamtrees.org and give them a dollar instead. And then go to Patreon and give me a dollar. Ten dollars. Just give me all your money. Uh, teamtrees.org. Go there. That's the main thing. Bye.